Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to another video. Today is sort of another sort of unboxing, sort of slash review. Um, as you can see, I've got the Backman Windhoff MPV or multi purpose vehicle. It's um, a two piece sort of set. Um, it's I've obviously taken it out of the box already, uh, but I'll show you why that is in a minute. But yeah, here's a sort of initial um, sort of view of it. Very good quality as always. My second sort of Backman um, diesel. And yeah, it's a two sort of piece um, set. Um, this here is the power car section and it's joined together here by a sort of, well, it's a semi sort of, per well, it's a permanent coupling, but in real life it's a semi permanent coupling. Um, so they are permanently connected while they're in the layout. Um, and yeah, overall, so far, very sort of pleased with the finish of it. It's it's very realistic. I was very pleased um, with the way the Class 57 turned out. I was very pleased with the, that model. So I've sort of wanted to get another another um, sort of modern image um, diesel, and I thought this would be something quite interesting. Uh, okay, so the box is just a little hollowed out shell, but inside you get these two little bits of packaging here. I think they're called like the ice cube packaging. You get collector's club little leaflet and then these servicing manual sort of things. Um, how to... Oh, How to sort of take the uh, the locomotive apart, and how to fit the detail pack, etc. So, the reason why um, I've already um, unpacked the engine, well, locomotive, I guess, is this is obviously the packaging here. It's the normal style packaging that you would get, although once you once you open it up like this you'll see that this bit is here and basically if I move the camera here this when it's in the packaging all these pieces here are loose they all come off this one's a bit stiff on here um, but they all have these little sort of I guess little I don't know what you would call them little um, sort of feet thing that stick down in the holes that are on this sort of flatbed here. So you have to sort of remember which order they all went in. They do have little arrows on in case you forget, um, pointing forward. So, so yeah, essentially this bit here goes in between and then you rest all those on top and it was just a real sort of faff to, um, to get it all out so I thought it'd be better to to get it out um, ahead of time and and then just show you sort of what the packaging is like it's just a very standard packaging this packaging is for this one here it's the the non power car the power car when you lift up this one I'll zoom in a bit you're presented with the motor and the chip I believe it's a 21 pin digital decoder um, so this, yeah, this side of this engine is a lot heavier than this one, as it would be sort of expected. Um, but same, nonetheless, it's all these these little units that just fit on top. One thing I have noticed, as you can probably see, some of them don't fit sort of plush. They they don't they sit on top. Some of the feet things um, fit in the holes, but on most of them they don't fit in right away, like all of them. Um, so I think I'm gonna to have to go around one by one and sort of file down the little feet things and to make them fit all perfectly. But the, it still runs around the layout um, fine. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd show you show you what this sort of set comes as. I got it from Rails of Sheffield, as I mentioned. Um, they had it at a very good price and yeah, let's see what it's, uh, it's looking like on the layout. Okay, so now I've got it off the table. Uh, we can sort of look at it in a bit more detail. Here's the power car, as I mentioned. It's only got the three units on it. That's how you can sort of 
denote that that's the power car. The dummy car has these four ones here. But if we work our way from front to back, we've got the power car um, cab itself here with the figures in. The buffers are not sprung, but they're very nice. We've got the plow here as well on the front. And we've got the area where you can put all the detail pack in. Um, working our way back, we've got these fir these this first unit, sorry. Um, this little thing up here, which I'm not entirely sure what that's for. Um, we've got all the nice detail along here. And yeah, we've got, it's just a very nice finish really. We've got loads of detail, as you can see, on this little unit here. The coupling here is hidden quite nicely, um, especially when you're looking down on it. You've got this metal plate here, which moves around. I don't know how well you can see that. It moves around as the, the engine um, is working its way around the track and we've got all these little um, handrails which are all nicely painted, nice finish um, yeah so this is the dummy car we've got this extra I guess the 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 units on the on it are the same these front two are the same it's just this has a larger one the, the power car and the dummy has these two instead um, I'm not entirely sure the functions of them but I just yeah they're just different but overall quality wise you can see all the little detail everywhere um, the painting is really nicely finished and yeah all these little hazard warning stickers um, and all the just the general little painting and markings that you see down here it's just a very sort of um, well finished engine or model even um, and I'm heads up like to Batman for this this is um, very very well finished um, just as my 57 over there was so so yeah let's see it see it running okay so I've encountered a little bit of a problem here um, it's more my fault than the the MPV but basically on the middle track here this crossing I made myself. I put polyfiller um, down and then had this, I think this might have been Gauge Master, this um, track finish on, not track finish, sorry, road finish on the top. And the middle track, well, the first track is out of, out of use anyway because it's first radius and I can't really use anything on that because nothing very much these days can go around that radius. The middle track, I've got the HST on it, um, at the moment um, but I've just changed that and put that back on because um, basically every engine here runs smoothly over this it took a long time to actually file it down enough before it would finish before it was finished sorry and it would work but you can see that there are scrapes I don't know how well you can see these scrapes here there's a bit of a rise here and some engines do scrape but it seems to be it doesn't stop their performance very much but but this uh, unfortunately it can't get up at all it just beaches out so i have a feeling that's down to as i showed you before under here there's the motor and the, the wheels here are very small and the bogies are very small and i have a feeling that the the running gear for those um like a sort of, I, I, it's probably it's probably not called a differential, but where the the motor is meeting the the axles or something, it's um, it's just grounding out um, on here. So I switched it to this outside track, thinking it'd be okay. It runs, it clears this bit, but I'm having an issue with that corner right there. For some reason, I, it's caused me no problems before, but it started catching on some of the Mark III coaches some of the Mark 1s and now this. So it's catching the side and I really don't want it to tip over. So unfortunately, it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to get a proper running session in and I'm gonna to need to try and sort out some of these issues. I will, I can show you that it does, obviously, it does run, it does run, it absolutely runs fine. Um, you get the, you can see the, the flicker of the lights there. Um, there's, nothing wrong with the engine um, at all it's it's my sort of installations really that have caused it problems um, so that's going to have to wait which is a bit of a shame um, but nonetheless I'm still very pleased with it 
as you can see, you've got the, the modern sort of figures and the transit over there. I don't know if I've mentioned before um, in an, an earlier video, but I've recently got this. I um, mean, it was an old, well, it was a network rail Oxford diecast transit that I took the network rail, you can see, I took those off, and as I got so much first Great Western, I um, I got some first decals um, and decided to put those on on the front. Oh, sorry, not the front, the sides and the back, um, just for something a bit different. But but yeah, the modern scene is coming along very well, and I think this is a perfect addition to it. But yeah, the only criticism would be that these units on top don't fit a hundred percent, sort of plush sort of flush fitting whatever you want to say um, and I need to sort out some of this <laughs> this this crossing and over there on the platform so so yeah this really hasn't gone how I how I planned it to go but nonetheless extremely pleased with the look of this um, runs absolutely fine and yeah hopefully I can sort out the problems and you'll see it running in the near future so yeah, thanks again for watching. Um, sorry I couldn't show it, you it running. Uh, I'm just as sort of disappointed as you are probably. But um, but yeah, hopefully I can get that done sometime soon. So yeah, cheers.